Good morning. Yes. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Happy rainy Sunday. Is it still raining outside? <coughs> God, would you make it rain in here? Amen. Let's start standing. Yeah, Megan. Yeah. Second that. <laughs> we all came in um, kind of this morning with a sense of expectation that God wants to just show up in a way that perhaps we haven't experienced before, or perhaps we have. Who knows? He's God, and we're not, and He can do what He wants. <laughs> Um, if we allow him to. And so that's the invitation this morning is come as you are. And however that is, God will meet you in that place. And um, the beautiful thing is that we can be changed. Um, needs can be met. And Jesus can take center stage where he should be by no effort of our own but simply by us resting as Ron always says right take a seat sit down in him and um, I really feel like that's the invitation this morning for us amen amen, amen. so the understanding that we've all come from weeks with different things going on and whatnot I just want to invite you right now just to close your eyes um, and to fix your heart and your mind and your thoughts on Jesus. That we can walk through this worship service in unity. Through the power of the Holy Spirit that binds our hearts together.
church Come fill us up Come fill us up We need We want We have to have you We need You and you. 
shadow of change or unfaithfulness in you, you are completely trustworthy. Yes. May it be our prayer that you be our anchor, God. Because with that truth revealed in our hearts, God, we can, we can completely and joyfully surrender to you. you are absolutely trustworthy and therefore we can be absolutely surrendered.
Just wait on the Lord for a few minutes. I just feel like there's this I still get a sense of just this invitation. So I'm just going to have Paula play for a little bit. And I'd just like to encourage you to respond. There isn't any right way to respond. It's just what's in your heart. If you'd like to come down front, the altar is open. If you need prayer, um, I just encourage you to grab somebody that's beside you. I just feel like we're not quite done. We're not quite yet supposed to move on, so um, I don't want to make the mistake of moving on too quickly before. It might just be for one of you that you just need to respond in some way. So we're just going to sit and wait on the Lord. is right on the money on that. There's an invitation. This week, I know this in the natural, that there's been many dealing with, the, with loss. Loss of family members, loss of friends. And there's this a spirit of, of heaviness that wants to settle in. I believe God wants to lift it. I'm just silly enough to believe that. Look 
Because even in our grieving, even in our hurting, even in our loss, the scriptures tell us there is to be a joy. And God can give a joy. It's not a fake thing. It's not a big smile. Sometimes there's no smile at all. But in your heart, the joy is knowing that God is dealing with it. And knowing that God is there. And knowing that the Holy Spirit will comfort. And the Holy Spirit will strengthen. So if you would, just if you want to come down front and pray, come. If you want to stay where you're at, stay where you're at. But let's just take a moment and pray. Ask Him. And then release the best you can. Take our hurt, take our pain, take our grief. And at the same time, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you will bind the attack of the enemy. Whatever he's using in our lives to keep us bound, to keep us from experiencing you, to keep us from moving in what you've called us to, the very call in our lives. In Jesus' name, right now, Lord, I ask that you will break the enemy's chains off. That, Lord, we've been walking maybe in sorrow, maybe in grief, maybe in all kinds of stuff that seems to be holding us down. But, Lord, you said that joy comes in the morning. And, Lord, you're the bright and morning star. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, come and shine in our hearts like it says in your word. Shine in our hearts. And Father, raise us up to stand. And at the same time, sit. Sitting and resting in you and all you've done in our lives and all that you are and all that you are in us. 
knowing that there's nothing we can do to change anything except surrender. Because you hold our days. You hold our nights. You hold everything about us. Our days were numbered before we were ever born, and you knew our name. And it says that you have a plan for us, a perfect and wonderful plan. So, Lord, right now, raise that up. Raise it up in us, Lord, the hope and expectancy of what you've called us to do, what you want us to do. The very life and life abundantly walking in you and walking in your will and walking according to your voice. Clean out our ears that we may hear you, O oh God. And strengthen the relationship between us, O oh God. Bless you. We worship you. And thank you for what you're doing. Lord, all discouragement must go in Jesus' name. just kept saying um, it's one of the psalms where it talks about our justice will shine like the noonday sun and I just it was the part of the noonday sun and I just felt like God's bright light and the warm sun radiating down on us and that God wants us to feel his warmth to feel his comfort to feel his love and that it should warmth in us like sitting in the sun in the middle of the day that's what he wants us to feel. I just felt like um, the enemy's trying to steal our joy. Don't let him steal your joy. You've got to pull it up out of you, and don't let him steal it. And I know Rebecca talked about that before, but it's, I feel it really strongly that he's trying to steal our joy. So just don't let him do it. When we were singing that song, I really felt... Um, some of these things, but one of the things is that I think there's some individuals here that have had a dream and it hasn't come to pass and there has been discouragement and you keep taking it back and you've done a lot on your own strength and I think what God was saying is today hand that dream to me allow me to be completely involved in it completely surrender it to me and then see what happens because I lavishly love you. I pursue you with an everlasting love. And I want the good things in your life. And I want to give them to you. So then we, in turn, can give the glory to him. So I got to realize a dream yesterday. And uh, it's not been an easy week. Um, it says in the scripture, beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. And back last spring when we were planning to go to Israel in November, I was having my devotions, and that's when God talks to me through the word or praying. And he just popped in my mind that there was a minister and his wife um, down on St. George Island that he wanted to go along, be able to go along to Israel. And I said, okay. So then I called him. And he said, oh, it's been, it's been a dream all my life. I mean, literally. And he's nearing our age. <laughs> I won't say how old. But he said, it's, the window's going to close soon if I don't get to go. And I said, pray about it. Call me back. We called her back in about a month. And he said, we just can't go. And he gave all these lame excuses. And so when I went to St. George. I talked to his wife and I said, why are they, you, why, you wanna go so bad? She said, he'd kill me if I told you, but we've just been investing in the church because financially we've been on a low downside in the economy and we just can't. Well, I decided, I'm gonna make this quick, I promise. I decided 
that I began to, I prayed and I said, Lord, you gave me a will. And now if you want this to be a dream fulfilled for them, give me a desire, a burning desire that won't stop. And Denise isn't here right this second, but she knows that um, while I was down there, I was in um, a Miss Ruth's pool, this 89 year old lady who's just fantastically in love with God. And the Lord said, share with Ruth your desire. And so I did. And she said, oh, well, I'm gonna talk to some people. And so she did, and then there were some, you know how you hit bumps, and people thinking, oh, it's not the right timing, et cetera. You can never get a whole church to agree on something. And this was all done secretly, you know, they didn't know about it. So anyways, um, it was getting, it's getting to the point that we needed to make a, de a deposit on their trip, and nothing was happening. And I came home from seeing my grandbabies, and went through gobs of mail, and there at the bottom was this l letter from the treasurer. And in it was money that the people had gone together because of Ruth's efforts. And another uh, couple in the church, uh, she traveled extensively, and she said, oh, I've got Delta miles. I can do their tickets. So there it was, two-thirds of the trip. And so I wrote to a woman who had said, I texted her, and I said, you had told me to let you know that when the church raised the biggest part that you would make up the difference. Well, she's a Bible scholar. She's taught Bible 40 years here in Atlanta. And the pastor can attest, I got a couple texts back that basically challenged that I heard, didn't hear God. <laughs> and I went back to God and I said, you know, this dream feels like it's being stolen away by, by this. And who's going to make up the, you know, I need a third more. Well, they need a third more, which was like $2,500. And so I said, God, I know you gave this to me. The one thing I've prayed since I've been in Sozo is I have to hear God. If I don't hear God and don't hear the Holy Spirit, then all my efforts are in vain. So I prayed and God just kept saying, just believe. You were putting all your eggs in one basket. Just believe that God's going to do this. So yesterday, I, it was I just knew I needed to call them and let them know and see what they wanted to do. So I called and I said, listen, I'm holding these checks and I have Delta Miles for two thirds of your ticket to go to Israel. And I have not heard the joy in his voice. He lost his son about four years ago, tragically. And I heard joy that I had not heard from him in four years. And he said, oh, I just told Judy that our window's closing. We, if we don't go this year, we can't go physically. And it was just, I, I mean, just to be the, all I was was the vessel. I, it wasn't me. I didn't have the money or the resources. But all I did was say, God, you gave me this to say, to do. And it just helped me to keep going along and going along. Well, it wasn't, my phone rang all day yesterday afternoon. One woman who had challenged me after the first woman, and she was, she even withdrew the money. She said, don't put my check in. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm for this because I've talked to some other people. I don't think that timing is right. And she called me back and I texted her and I told her that they were super excited. She texted, she called me back three times with people she thought about. I got a call from a 80 year old Delta pilot who said, I've known him since he was a policeman here in Atlanta and on up through the ranks to judge and then laying down being a judge and being a pastor to a small little church in, on St. George Island. He said, I wanna help. So <laughs> I know the rest of it's there. And I just, what I wanna do is encourage you. If you feel God's telling, impressing you to bless somebody, but you don't have the resource and you don't know how, just ask him, will you take this will I have and will you make it a burning desire? And then will you show me who you want to use to bring this about, and they get the blessing too. I mean, it just splashes all over. I'm done. <laughs> um, I had a word, and I didn't really think I had a word, and then the Lord said, yes, <laughs> you have a word. Um, I, as we were worshiping during um, the song, I Surrender, I felt like the Lord just, it was very simple. He just said, you know, as you surrender, you will find freedom. And there are some of us today that are feeling bound up and, and they're feeling, you know, I wish I felt free, you know, just free to worship and free to, you know, not be afraid. And, and whatever it is that you feel like is, is holding you back, it comes through surrender. Um, that's the way. It's
surrendering all. And then the Lord reminded me um, yesterday, I was talking to a friend um, on the phone, and as soon as I hung up, I started singing a song, and this old hymn just kind of was there, and I start singing, and I'm going all over my house singing this hymn all afternoon. And I felt like it was for her, but then I felt like this morning as we were worshiping, the Lord said, no, that was also for the body. And so it's an old hymn. Some of you might remember it, but it's, At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, where the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. And that's just been ringing in my head ever since, and it's at the cross. And some of us, there are some here today that don't know Jesus, and it's at the cross that you're going to find true freedom from all of that stuff that you're carrying with you. So if that's you this morning, just come to him and surrender. Come to him. Good morning. I have one word too. Miracles. How many people here believe in miracles? I'll share one with you that happened this morning. I I went to go pick up Greg, my friend. He needed a ride to church. So I was running late. So I said, okay, let's go. So I get down the street. And I'm on the other side of town. And there's this lady walking. Very distinguished lady. There was something about her, I said. I looked at her, and the the inner voice said, help that lady. So I turned around, and I just so happens that when I pulled up, there she was. And I said to her, ma'am, are you going to church? She goes, yes. I said, well, it's raining out here. Let me take you. She looks at me. Okay, she gets in the car. And she says, you know, I don't get in the car with strangers. And I said, don't feel bad. I, I don't either. So, so, so we're driving down the road, and I can sense that she's a little nervous. So she says, do you look familiar? And I said, maybe you see me on TV. I am the national spokesman for the Abuse and Neglected Husbands Association. She says, I never heard of them. So once I got a laughing, everything got kind of calmed down. Then I thought about it. She says, Are you go, do you go to, we're speaking in Spanish. She says, do you go to my church? I said, no, I don't. But I'm away. I'm on my way to pick up a brother to go to my church. And as soon as I say, I'm on my way to pick up a brother, I looked up and Greg is standing on the side of the road going, hey, you missed me. So I said, no, I'm turning around. Well, I didn't know this lady's church happens to be next door to where he lives. I mean, it was just like one hint after the next hint. So I dropped the lady off. I'm thinking, well, this is just a coincidence. Somebody opens the door, a man comes up to my face and says, thank you for bringing her. You know, <laughs> so, so the whole point being is little miracles like that, they happen to us every day, and we don't really realize that we have been blessed. So I, had I taken the time to shave, I would have missed out on that lady. I would I would have missed out. On, I would have picked up Greg, and I wouldn't be standing here telling you this story. God bless. <laughs> Hi, just a brief testimony and then a, a short prayer. Uh, one of our neighbors at the cul-de-sac, the husband's name is Will, and they have Betty, Becky, and Benjamin uh, for the rest of them. So anyway, a, a little bit I had been praying for them. I don't think that they're Christians. Well, yesterday, he and I started in a conversation. Sometimes he'll be walking his kids out front or whatever. And I don't even remember how it got started, but he started talking about Islam. And so we talked about that a little bit. And then from there, we went to how do you interpret text? which led me to talk about how to interpret Bible text, and so we had a discussion about it. So I just want to briefly pray for Will and his family that I don't think they know Jesus so that they come into the kingdom. So, Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for Will and for Becky, Benjamin and Betty. Lord, uh, you know this family. Uh, You know the grandmother from Denmark, and Lord, we just pray that you'd move in their lives that they might come into your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Let's stand.
someone. Greet someone. Take your seat. We are no. 
All right. We are so glad that you are with us this morning. Welcome to Marietta Vineyard Church. As you are getting back to your seats, there's a couple of things that we want to remind you about that are also in the bulletin that you were handed when you came in this morning. Um, there is a place inside the bulletin for you to write down your information, for someone to call you if you want to know more about becoming a member of the church. There's also some space in there for you to write down a prayer request you have, and people will pray for you. So if you want to do that during this time of announcements and before we get started with the sermon, you can go ahead and do that. It can go into the offering basket when it goes around. Um, also, the food pantry. There are some specific items that are listed in your bulletin that the food pantry is in need of. And we want to remind you that nutrition is very important for all of us. So make sure that you're donating nutritious things. And there's also a freezer back there. So if you have something that you want to donate for the freezer, we would appreciate that. Um, next Saturday, we have a gathering. We try to get together as a church family at Ronnie John's Sunset Grill, not the Beach Cafe, but the Sunset Grill, the other restaurant, um, this Saturday night. So if you want to join us and get to know us a little bit better, join us on Saturday night at Ronnie John's. And the regular meeting schedule for the evening services and the weekly services is going forward, except for the Men of Valor group. It is not meeting this week. And you have an announcement. Come on up, Ralph. Hi, uh, I'm Ralph Gunn. We're trying to put together a new members class. So if you're interested, uh, sign up at the connections table after the service. And if you have questions about that, you can come see me. Thank you. Okay. Well, good morning. Mr. Ron. Oh, thank you. It's just Ron. Pastor Ron. Hey, you. Whatever. If you have your offering, let's, let's continue worship with our offering this morning. It's been an interesting morning already. Father, we bless you. We thank you for what you've given us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for what, what you give and what you take away. And we know that all things work together for the good. And so we declare in this giving this morning that we trust you. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just going to do a rookie. Come on. Here we go. All right, where's my youngins? got some beautiful youngins up here, don't we? You, I didn't even say anything about prayer. <laughs> Are you the one who wants to pray? You going to give a good prayer? All right. God, please help everyone who's sick in here and help them in this work. Amen. Amen. Hey, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes you just don't, you don't know exactly all what God may be doing. How many, how many got God figured out? How many of you got him halfway figured out? You know, I, I shared with the worship team this morning because uh, Greta said, you know, what's God saying this morning? When we got together for practice about nine this morning, and I said, I, I've got a great expectancy. And um, I explained to him what was going on yesterday while I was mowing the lawn. I just really felt that God wanted to do something. Now, I don't know what that is. I'm not going to be so bold as some would do to, you know, say exactly what that is. I don't know. And sometimes he does things, and we don't even know that he's done them. But he's told us ahead of time he's going to do something. But we go, okay, we leave, and we go, what was it? Because we were expecting something grandiose, you know. You know, a cloud appear in the in the room, or people to fall out, or something. And we walk away going, it was just the same old Sunday, but that's not necessarily true. And so I'm mowing my lawn, and uh, I get you know I get done with the first part of it. I sat down in the garage, going you know sweating and going, oh, I need a lawn service. And um, <laughs> and my phone, my you know I had my phone out there because I had got it you know music playing and stuff, and so I. It went, like I got a text, and I look at it, and a pastor friend of mine down in Florida 
he, he wrote a text, he says, hey buddy, I feel compelled to pray for you in the service on Sunday. He goes, I'm not sure why, but blessings. And I went, you know, and it confirmed what I was feeling in my heart that God wants to do something. Now what it is, I don't know. I've been asking him, and I think so far, I think he's been doing something pretty cool. How about you guys? <laughs> Let's pray and see how far we get this morning. Lord, we bless you, and we ask you in Jesus' name to speak to our hearts. And we love you, and we welcome you here in Jesus' name. We've been looking the last couple weeks on this thing called the challenge, which I, I got the idea from the ALF challenge. I saw a great thing the other day. It had a picture of Jesus being baptized. He said, the ultimate water challenge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I went, amen. But we, the first week we looked at, or the challenge was, will you love? The second week we looked at, the challenge was, will you just do it? Do what? Do the things that God said, do the miracles, realize that God wants to use us on a daily basis, you know, out in the world to bring his love, to bring his word, to bring his witness into a lost and dying world. So will you do it? Will you evangelize? Will you allow God to use you and use the giftings he's given you on a daily basis? And today, we're going to see what it, here's the challenge. Will you worship? There you go. We just did that. Let's see. Okay. Will you worship? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Hebrews 13, 15. Here we go. Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of the lips that give thanks to his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pray pleased. Let's read it again. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. And what we're going to look at, the first part is called a sacrifice of praise. And this is something that God brought, up, brought in my life many years ago as I was reading through Hebrews because praise and worship has become an industry. It has become a fad. And I'm going to say some things that probably are going to get you upset with me, but what else is new? Okay? It has become a, uh, uh, a thing we do. It has become a celebrity issue. We have, you know, in churches now, we got celebrity worship leaders where 20 years ago, 25 years ago, the only celebrity worship leader was, um, what was the name that did with Billy Graham? George Beverly Shea. You know, he had that big, deep bass voice. And he was the only major, you know, world-known worship leader or soloist. But it's become this thing where stars are in it. You know, when you think of so-and-so oh, or so-and-so, oh, oh, I love his, I don't like his or her worship, but those I really like. And it's become that way in churches. Is it necessarily wrong? No. But is it necessarily right? No. Because what we've done is we've equated and we've relinquished the aspect of worship to here. But then again, we've, we've mistaked, I heard a pastor a couple weeks ago say what's happened in worship is we've worshiped the feeling what's happened in worship today is we worship the feeling because it makes us feel good is there anything wrong with feelings no does God love feelings yes does God have feelings yes he can be happy he can be angry he has a feeling of love he has all these things feelings are not bad but when we worship the feeling then we're in trouble. Let's look at something. We're going to look at a couple things. Praise exists for God. Look at the first part. It says, through him. Stop. The word there, through, is dia. It means on account of. It means because of. Because Christ is a mediator of our prayers and praises, not ritual observances. What was going on here is the writer, whoever 
It may be that wrote Hebrews, there's all kinds of different theories on it. But what he was doing, he was equating worship in, the, in what we call the Old Testament to today. And he's saying what happened was, is that we cannot have ritual. We cannot worship by ritual. Through him. Worship is done through Christ. It exists for Christ. It exists for God. It's not about us. It's not about our feeling. It's not about what we, honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to, we can debate on this later on. It's not about what we get from it. But the beauty of it is this. Think about it. Are we supposed to love our spouses only when they show us love back? No. Are we supposed to give to them only when they give to us? Are we supposed to love them if we don't feel it? Yeah. Yeah. I've said this many times, don't answer this, people. You will get in trouble. But how many mornings have you woken up and you don't feel a lot of love for the person next to you, your spouse? You really don't. Why? Because you may have gone to bed angry. You may have, there may have been something that's been eaten at you and you haven't discussed it yet. And so you didn't get up in the morning and go, oh, I love you, I love that face. Oh, one, 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 one. You want to get up and breathe your dirty breath on them. Hi! And then go brush your teeth. Right? Because you don't feel a lot of love for them in the, in the first, you know, on those times. But there's other times you love them. But do we, do we stop loving when we don't feel it? No. So it's the same. Praise and worship, as we call it today, the industry we call it today, was never meant for us. It was meant for God. Period. We're supposed to worship whether we feel it or not. And this isn't a correction. This is hopefully going to get us past something and step us into something else. And what that is, is what worship is really all about. It says through him. It means because of him. Because of him what? Praise is a lifestyle at all times. Look at the next part. Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise. The word continually is this. It's pantos. With with. It means this. I'm just going to do this very quick. All right? It means without interruption. So if praise and worship is without interruption, then what is this? Is there anything wrong with this? No. Should this spark us? Yes. Actually, you want to get real? This shouldn't spark us. This should help continue. We should be sparked before we come in. We should be worshiping all week. All this does is just enhance it or, or continue it or, or, or just, you know, give us another aspect and a venue of worship. And it's not about singing. And it's not about, you know, about playing instruments. It's not about that stuff. It's about a life that continuously praises God in the good times, in the bad, in the gain, in the loss, no matter what. That's, that's the sacrifice. You know what the real sacrifice is? Is worshiping when we don't want to. Worshiping in the worst time of our life. Worshiping when, when we, we don't have something to, wor you know, something to worship about. You ever notice that? We only worship when we feel good. You're going, that's not true. You're right. On some of it's not. But on a whole, it's, it, it's true. We worship when we give God praise. We give God, like this. We get mad at somebody in church. In the, in the body. Or we get mad at uh, something about church. Or we get mad about, you know, I'm not, this didn't come from anything that's going on here. Everybody goes, is he talking about something? No. But this is a standard, a standard in Christendom. Somebody ticks us off. Probably in church. And then what do we do? Well, fine. And our whole demeanor changes. And then we go from this, oh, I love God, to, oh, is that worship? No. Do we worship when somebody makes us upset? Yes. Does that mean we put on a Hillsong tape and go for it? No. It means this. Our response. Worship is a response to the very love of God. Worship is a response. Worship is a response to what God is doing. Worship is an adoration. What does worship mean? It means in the Greek and also in the Hebrew, it means worth-ship. It's giving worth to something. 
But unfortunately, we take worth back. Why? Because we do it in our relationships. When our spouse or our friend gets mad at us, what do we do? We pull back from them. And we do the same thing to God. And we're going, wow, you're getting pretty technical. Worship is a response. It's a lifestyle. In context, where it says, let us continually offer up, it means we are not to only praise and worship God at fixed times and seasons. What he was responding to was, was now don't get me wrong, okay, was the Jewish calendar. What happened was, is during that time, now that, now that, that Christ came, they were still only worshiping and giving worth at seasons and times. It wasn't a continuous life. Does it stop the feast? No. God never stopped the feast. But what happens is, is this. Let's look at this as a feast. When we come here on Sunday morning, is this when we start worshiping? If it is, then we're going, we're doing exactly what he's telling us not to do. If we're not coming worshiping through the week and worship is our lifestyle, then we're doing this. We're not continuously worshiping. We're only worshiping when we come to the worship service. So in context, that's what he's talking about. We are not to only praise and worship God at fixed times and seasons or festivals, but continuously at all, all the time, every moment. There's an old saying that the rabbis had. It was this. At a future time, all sacrifices shall cease, but praises shall not cease. Go to the next thing. Praise is a sacrifice. Look what it says. Through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise. The word sacrifice is thusia. Thusia means the very act of sacrifice. It means a service. It means an obedience. The word praise is inasis, which is, come, comes from ineo which means to praise. It's the actual act. It's a noun, the actual act of praise, to adore, to give worth to. So the sacrifice is this. It's an act of sacrifice. It's hard to sometimes say, God, I trust you. That's an act of worship. God, I believe you. Even though I can't see it, that's an act of worship. God, I love you. That's an act of worship. God, I will follow you. I'm not going to pull back my love because I don't see what's going, you know, what I want happening. That's an act of praise and worship. It's not a song. Songs are for praise and worship. We need those. Never are we to stop that. Never are we to stop music from being, being an act of praise and worship. Never. And as long as I'm here, it will never happen. Why? Because I'm a musician. I love music. Music is one, one, uno, uno vehicle of praise and worship. It is not the, con the whole of praise and worship. Praise and worship is our life, and our life is meant to be a sacrifice, correct? What does Romans 12, 1 say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies as a living, same word, which is your act of spiritual worship. Let me show you, okay? Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Let's go to 4. And coming to him as to a living stone. Who's the living stone? Jesus. Exactly. Which has been rejected by men. Was he rejected? But is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as living stones. Wait a minute. Jesus is a living stone, right? Right? So if Christ is in us, we are in him, then what are we? Living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. There are sac there's three sacrifices mentioned back in Hebrews chapter 13. Praise, a sacrifice of praise. Then in verse 15, it talks about good works, and it talks about sharing our material blessings. Those are sacrifices. They are acts of worship. When we give and when we minister to somebody, it's an act of worship. 
It's not just the fact of giving. Why? Because everything we do as a believer, everything, giving, talking, loving, caring, um, driving, um, ministering, counseling, um, uh, loving our children, loving our spouse, talking to our neighbors, going to Wendy's, God forbid, and going to a restaurant, go anywhere we go. Everything we do is to be an absolute act of worship and praise. Why? Because it's a sacrifice. Doing something we don't want to do. Loving when you're not feeling it. Being kind when you want to lash out. That's sacrifice. Sacrifice costs. David said, I will not sacrifice unto the Lord or worship the Lord if it won't cost me something. Real worship costs. And this, wow, well, well, I don't want to jump ahead yet. There's other sacrifices. We already said one. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, our body is to be a sacrifice of offering, of praise and worship. Offerings, Philippians 4, 18, is to be a sacrifice. Our offerings, our giving. Prayer, Psalm 141, verse 2, is a sacrifice, is an act of worship. A broken heart in repentance, not a broken heart. A broken heart meaning that of repentance. Repentance is an act of worship. When we confess our sin, that's an act of worship. This all worship. It's not about music. Souls won to Christ, Romans 15, verse 16. That's a sacrifice. It's an act of worship. When we win people to Christ. How many of you really, when you, how many of you want to just run out of here and go grab the first person you see and tell them about Jesus? Don't answer. It would be a sacrifice because why? Because it's scary. We're not used to just talking to people that we don't know. And most of us don't know how to do that. So to go out and do that is a sacrifice. It costs us. It costs us our, our fear. It costs us our, our pride. It costs us all kinds of things. So in winning souls to Christ, that's a sacrifice. It's an act of worship. See, everything we do, everything. Go to the next point. Praise is to be focused. Look what it says. Through him, then, let us offer, continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to who? To God. Why? Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, all through that, it talks about worthy is the lamb who was slain, worthy to receive. See, God is the only one worthy to receive praise. Why? He's perfect. There's no sin in him. He is love itself. His very character is love. All of these things, we can sit here all day and talk about character and who God is. That's why he's worthy. He's worthy to receive. We're not worthy to receive. But in Christ. When Moses was interceding for the people, I think it's in Exodus chapter 33. Don't turn to it right now. You can look it up. God was so angry with the people, with his people. He said, I will not go with them. They can go into the promised land, but my presence will not go with them. Moses threw himself down and he interceded. And because of Moses' intercession, God says, I will go with the people. Because God wanted to kill him. He was so upset. Because of what they had done, they grumbled against him. And they grumbled against the leaders. And God was just furious with him. Yet he loved them. And when Moses interceded, he says, I will go with them. And then Moses, Moses was one bad boy, man. He, got, he was on his face before God. God answered his prayer. He even said, God, if you won't go with him, go with him and wipe me out. If you're going to wipe them out, wipe me out and let them live. He was willing to give his life. God said, no, 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 no. I'll go with him. So then Moses goes, this is Ron's revised version. I got one more thing. Just one more. Show me your glory. Is there anything wrong with asking that? Evidently not. So God goes, all right. So he picks him up, or he says, get in the cleft of the rock, get over there. And God put his hand over where he was at. He covered him. And God, for our best explanation, passed by, it says. And when he got 
past him, when his back was shown, he pulled his hand and said, and let Moses see. But here's the thing. Now, we all, we, we, we've heard this story before. They make jokes about, you know, Moses got to see God's backside and all that kind of stuff. But that's not the essence of the story or the account. The thing is, is when God went by them, by him, he was singing his own praises. He was saying, the Lord, the Lord, who's God, good and merciful, the Lord God Almighty. And he's going by declaring his own worship. Now, wait a minute. If praise and worship begins and is for and is all about God, if we, through Christ, through the sacrifice of the cross, what happened to us, Christ lives within us, who does the praising? Who does the most effectual praising? So when we start and we learn to rest in him, our life becomes an absolute declaration of God's glory. It's not about us. We can't even effectively praise him. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's unbelievable. God goes, you know, you guys, because of what you did in the garden, you're not going to totally be able to praise me, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to redeem you, sanctify you, make you holy through my son, and then I'm going to get my praise from you because of my son being in you. Bada bing, bada boom. Think about it. That's the beauty of what God has done. So, praise is to be focused on who? On God, Revelation chapter 4 and 5. Our eyes are to be fixed. We're supposed to be fixated on Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2. And why? Because he loves us. It says, we didn't love him first. Who loved first? We love him because he loved us first. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. You see what's going on here? It's not about being, you know, getting into the worship stars. It's not about who's got the most kick and worship at their church, which I think we've got some pretty kick and worship here. Right? But it's not about that. What about it? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I really believe before most of us pass on to be with the Lord, God's going to pull the card. You know what that is? He's going to pull the plug. And a lot of this stuff right here that we're allowed to do, we're not going to be allowed to do. And I believe the church sometime is going to be going and just meeting secretly. I have always believed that. And we're not going to have this. How many of you ever seen, um, what was that story? China Cry. It was a movie back in the 80s that TVM put out. But there was a great part in that. In that movie, it was about Nora Lamb. And Nora Lamb was, was in the underground church. She got radically saved and God blessed her and pulled her out and did a wonderful work with her. You know, pulled her out of China, delivered her from the oppression and, the, and the, the stuff that was going on in China during that time. But what the church would do is, and this is a true fact, this is how they would do it during this time, because if they were caught, they would be executed. Kind of like some of the places in the world right now, right? But this is how they would praise. They had the hymns that we have today, you know, the old, as we call the old hymns, which I haven't figured that out yet. And what they would do is this, they would, they would have to whisper. And, you know, like, you know, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, you know that song? This is how they would praise it, praise. And then they would get through the song, and they would go, let's sing, how great thou art. And they would go. How many of us could worship that way? Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? Because if they got heard, they would get killed. That's terrible English, that they got heard. That they would get killed. Praise is a fruit. Look at what it says. Therefore, through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, and that is the fruit of our lips that give thanks to his name. The fruit. Fruit is this. Fruit produces, fruit grows, fruit nourishes, and is capable of reproducing itself. Praise is like fruit. It has purpose, it grows, it nourishes, and is capable of reproducing itself. The word fruit there is karpos. Karpos means this. It means the produce, both of trees and plants and of anything on the earth. It's used metaphorically here. Why? To talk about, about praise and worship. Meaning our deeds, our works, our conduct. That's our fruit. There's a fruit of repentance in Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, and in Luke chapter 3, verse 8. Same verse. But listen to this. 
Here's the slide. Go to the next slide. The produce of our lips is the contents of our hearts. Didn't Jesus say that? Matthew 12, 34, what comes out of the lip, lips is in the heart. So the produce, let's look at the fruit, the produce, the fruit, the produce of our lips is the contents of our hearts. But yet, at the same time, Jesus said, these people praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So you know what that is? It's called a lie. Praise is vocal. It says the fruit of our lips. Word lips there is exactly what it means. It means the natural lips, these things here. It's vocal. Praise is thankful. Look at it. Through him then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, that give thanks to his name. The word thanks here, it means this. It's the word homo logeo. It means confessing. The first, it means confessing. It means acknowledgement. Homo logeo means this. Homo meaning together with, and lego means to say. It means to say together with. Why? Because of this. I'm supposed to be praising God with my lips in the same way that Chris is, and we're supposed to do it together. It's called the congregation. I'm supposed to be singing what you're singing, which is Christ. I'm supposed to be singing what you're singing, which is Christ. My life is to declare what your life is to declare. Our lives are to declare Christ, and we do that together. Homo legeo, together with. Confessing together with. It's about the body confessing and giving praise to his name. Not just with our lips, but with everything about us, everything. With our life, whether, you know, instead of living in sin, the moment we, we sin, confess. See, confession of sin is an act of worship. God, forgive me. And then my life is right, and what happens is I'm back in with the body. Remember I told you that story about when I was ministering in a, a prison, and this one brother, the whole room, I mean, the, the, the prison praise band, that's what they call themselves, the prison praise band. They were cooking, man. They allowed them to have instruments in, but they, you know, long story, but they had instruments, and these guys were just all in, their, in their white suits, you know, just jamming away with their numbers and everything, you know, cooking. And the whole place is standing up except for this one brother sitting down, and he's got his head in his hands, sitting down with his head tucked down. He's, you can tell he's praying, and this brother in the Lord named Chuck went over to him, and he put his arm around him. He goes, hey, brother, what's, what's the matter? And he looked at him. He had tears running down his face. He goes, I'm not in one accord with the, with the, with the, the group, and so I'm not going to praise till I am. He says, I have to get right with God. And that's one of those ones you go, Okay. You know, those are the ones you leave alone. Why? Because it's not for you to go over there and try to minister to them. Get your butt out of there and allow God to work. And the guy praised, and about halfway through the worship, you know, the praise and worship is what we call it, he goes like this. He stands up and he goes, boom. And he knew that he was in right relationship with the Lord. But at the, before that, he wasn't in one accord with the group. How humble. Praise is thankful. Thank you mean what? Confessing together. In praise, go to the next slide. In praise, a person, let's read it this way. In praising God, it is impossible to exceed the truth. When you're with a person, if I sing the praises of, of Walker McGregor, he is a godly man, he is a wonderful man, you know, and, or whatever, and I just start praising Walker. I will most likely exceed what Walker really is. You know what I'm talking about by that? Exaggerate, say a few things that really that might not be about Walker. But see, the beauty of it, when we confess his name, when we confess the goodness of God, our truth can never exceed who he is. We can never say too much about him. We can never go past what God really is because he's infinite. He's absolutely perfect. And even in that, it doesn't, it doesn't suit him. It's not, it's not adequate. But he still wants to hear it. Now, last thing. Praise is absorbed with Christ. It says, look at the last part. 
Through him, let us continually offer up the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. The word name there means, in the Greek, it means name. But it means title. It means character. It means reputation. It means his actual person. Giving what to his name? Giving thanks to his name. Meaning to do, do this, to bring honor to his name, to hallow his name. What's the very first part of what we call the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Why? Because as much as we want to make his name holy, we can never make it too holy. We can never go past what it is. Go to the next slide. If it's not about you, will you worship? Let me explain that. Do not walk out of here thinking I am slamming the worship industry. I'm not going to tell you that I don't like a lot of it. I've been around a number of those that are in it. And some of them are wonderful. But some of them aren't what they proclaim. And we've made something marketable. And I don't believe that that's what praise and worship is. You can't market praise and worship. That's not saying that there's stuff out there that's wonderful. It is. Don't get me wrong. But don't depend on what goes on up here. Don't make this the thing that drives your worship. Don't make your CD player what drives your worship. Don't make your iPod or your iPhone what drives your worship. What drives our worship is Christ himself. Christ in us, the hope of glory. What drives our worship is an incredible understanding of what he actually did for us. Do you know, if we understood the magnitude of sin and what Christ did in our lives, we wouldn't be able to shut up. And I'm saying that about myself. If we really understood what God really did in our lives, is that the only reason that we can, we can be with him for all eternity is because of what he did on the cross and what happened in the tomb. That's it. And the magnitude of one sin, one small, we call a white lie, can separate a person from God forever. That's how vile and putrid and, and just evil sin is. But Christ chose to deliver us from that. And if we understood that, and I pray that as Marietta Vineyard Church, we all ask God to show us the magnitude of what he did in our lives. It's not about how many prophetic words we can get. It's not about how many prophetic words we can give. It's about Christ. And I'm not against, you know I'm not against the prophetic or any of the gifts. We need to see them flow, but they flow better when our lives are given as instruments of worship to God. Anybody can prophesy, but not everybody can prophesy in Christ. Do you understand what I mean by that? Meaning this, that our life continuously, as much as possible, glorifies God on a daily basis. William Brannan, one of, the, one of the, the faith healers, as they are called, during the, 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 the healing era in the early 40s, or late 40s and, and all through the 50s, William Branham started out wonderfully. But as time went on, he got off track. And his theology, it's like this. He began to believe his own legend. Does that make sense? And he thought he was above everybody else. He was unbelievably gifted in healing. He could walk in and clear out a hospital. Meaning this, he'd walk through and just put his hands on people like this on stretchers, and they would get up. They used to bring to his meetings, they would, they would actually clear out the small little hospitals during that time, and they would bring the people to the tent where he was preaching. And at the end, when he would pray for people, he would just go along. And, and it, there was a time when everybody got healed. 
he began to believe his own legend. And his life became all about William Branham. There was what is called, there's still some out there today called Branhamites, which go with his teaching and go with what he preached. A couple of brothers came to him and said, William, we love you. And they came in trying to let him see where he's going and what he's doing. And see, and I'll say it this way, the sin that he was in, the pride. And he rebuked them and sent them on their way. And they came back several times, several times. And finally, one guy came back to him many years later and said, William, God said, get your house in order. And he turned around and walked away. William Brand is driving home from a meeting, an incredible meeting. His wife's in the car. He's in the car. His son is ahead of him in another car. They're going down a back road in the country. The car's coming this way. Car lost control, got over in Williams Lane and hit William and his wife head on. Boom. She went flying out of the car. This is before seatbelts, he went flying out of the car. The car is just destroyed. The person, from what I understand, died in the other car. William's son saw it. He turned around and came back. And he came back and he saw that his mother was dead. And he came up to his father. His father, William, was still alive. William says, how's, it, how's your mom? How's your mom? And he didn't have the heart to tell his father that she's gone. And he said, son, take my hand and move me over and put my hand on your mom. His mom was dead. His son goes, dad, he goes, just do it. He slid his dad over and put his hand, his dad's hand on his mom. And she went, <laughs> died. Why did he die? Because he didn't hear. He didn't listen. But why am I saying this? For this reason, the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. I've seen people in deep sin that can prophesy inaccurately and prophesy the things of God. Because God doesn't, God's not an Indian giver. But imagine if the church the body, we're walking as instruments of praise and worship on a daily basis and using everything in their life as an act of worship. Not just the music, but your life as an instrument of worship. Imagine what this would be. I'm crazy enough to preach this stuff. They say, you know, I pastor a little church and the harder I preach, the smaller it gets. But you know what? It's okay. Because there's going to be a remnant that love God and that are called and that walk in his ways. Will you worship? If it's not about you, will you worship? Will you choose to worship? That's the challenge. I'm challenging me. I'm a musician. It's easy, and Paulo knows what I'm talking about. He can, he can back me up on this. And so can Greta and, and even Kelly. We can play certain songs and get a response every time. A musician that's good, he can read the crowd, and he can move it a certain way, and he can change it. He can kill you softly with his song. He can take your heart and he can form it. It's easy. It's called manipulation. Why? Who was the worship leader in heaven until he got thrown out? Who likes to pervert music? Will you worship if it's not about you? Because it's not. But yet, it's all about you. Because God loves us. And his love is given to us. And his love is poured out on us. Will you worship? Let's stand. Next week, next week, you guys are in for a big treat. The rabbi is going to be here. Rabbi Jay. Rabbi is going to be preaching and teaching next week. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. I am, I am so looking forward to it. He's going to give us an understanding of, of, the, of the, the season that's coming upon us, the Hebraic season of the feast.
fall feast. So don't miss it. And he's going to show us Christ in the midst of it all. Okay? Bow your heads with me real quick. Lord, thank you for what you did. I pray that today will be a beginning of us laying ourselves down. Us decreasing and you increasing in our lives. May the praise and the worship pour forth from every cell of our beings and being because we're, we're walking with you, we're talking with you, we're fellowshipping with you. And that our life is centered and set in you. And we are at rest in all that you do in our lives. And we trust you implicitly. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. May our lives, may Marietta Vineyard be a church made up of instruments that declare your praise. Thank you for this group. Thank you for what you're doing. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before you go, turn to your neighbor. Say this with me. It's going to be two things. Here, I'll do it. Okay, say this. Don't look at me. Look at your neighbor. Here's the first part. Look at him. Point your finger in, in love. This is not a bad thing. You can do this. Okay? Point your finger and say this with me. Are you ready? ready. To really worship. Get with the program.